protected you for himself. He blessed you for himself. Shalom, the Lord bless you. Welcome to Purpose and Marita Bliss with Pastor Honorine. I have a prophetic word for someone. God says he protected and blessed you for himself. And this word is coming to us from the book of Exodus chapter 13. I'm going to read to us verses 1 to 2 and then verses 13 to 15 or 13 to 16. He says, God spoke to Moses saying, consecrate every firstborn to me. The first one to come from the womb among the Israelites, whether person or animal, is mine. This is after God had sent the plague that killed the firstborns of the Egyptians. He then turns to Moses and he says, consecrate, set apart every firstborn in Israel for me. The ones that were supposed to die, but I protected and preserved them. Say, so give them to me. From verse 13, or oh, it's beginning to render showers of blessing. It says, redeem every firstborn child among your sons. When the time comes and your son asks you, what does this mean? You tell him, God brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery with a powerful hand. When Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, God killed every firstborn in Egypt, the firstborn of both humans and animals. That's why I make a sacrifice for every first male birth from the womb to God to redeem every firstborn son. The observance function like a sign on your hands or a symbol on the middle of your forehead. God brought us out of Egypt with a powerful hand. Hallelujah. Most often we tend to forget or we don't realize that when God blesses you, he's not blessing you really for you. It's, he is blessing you for himself. When God protects you, he's protecting you because he needs you. When he's blessing you, he's blessing you because he needs the blessing. His kingdom needs you. His kingdom needs your blessing. And if we fail to understand this, we are going to always feel like we are working for self or we are living for ourselves. Whereas God is protecting you and keeping you for himself. When you are conscious of the fact that God needs you, God wants you, you will know that when you pray, God doesn't answer your prayer just because he prayed, just because you prayed, sorry. Why do you want God to protect you? If God were to ask you, why should I protect your life? You think you tell God he should protect you because you want to continue enjoying your life? Or because simply because you don't want to die? What is it that you are doing in my kingdom that is of what? If oh, my father asked us this question some time ago, say, if God says, okay, there is beginning to be congestion on the head realm and they need to reduce some people. And he asks, comes to you and he asks you, why should I keep you alive? Why should I keep you alive right now? We want to, not like we are sending you to hell. No, we want to reduce the population on the earth. We want to send people to, to heaven. And he's asking you, give me one reason why I should keep you alive. Why do you think God, what would, would you have any reason? You don't tell God to bless you. God will not bless you because you want to live a comfortable life. Just because you want to foot you up to, 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 to pay your bills and get your house and get married and live fine. God will bless you because in blessing you, his kingdom will be blessed. God will bless you because when he blesses you, you will in return be a blessing to his kingdom. So God will bless you based on how much you can give back to the kingdom. So in other words, when God is blessing you, he is blessing you for himself. When God is protecting and preserving you, he's doing that for himself. When God is giving you your marriage, God is, will not just give you marriage because you want to have sex. God will give you marriage because your marriage will be a model marriage for the kingdom. And your marriage will be an exemplary marriage for the kingdom of God. So that you, God is looking for people to use as evidence to prove to the world that marriage still works. God is looking for someone to use as evidence to prove to the world that he still blesses people. 
He's looking for people to use as evidence to prove to the world that he still heals. But can you be evidence? It means you've got to go out there and present the evidence to the world and let the world know that you can still be happily married and, and have marital bliss without getting divorced. This is a model kingdom marriage. So God will not grant you marriage so that you flaunt your spouse everywhere and you have good sex. No, God will give you marriage so that you can be, have an exemplary marriage and your marriage will put God first and teach the world what the kingdom marriage is supposed to be. God will give you financial freedom so that you will not just be blessed, you will be a blessing to someone else. You will be a blessing to the kingdom of God. So when you can do for God what he cannot do for himself, then God will certainly empower you to do more. That's why we are not here. There is nothing we have that was given to us. God asked us in the book of 1 Corinthians, he says, what is it that you have that, that actually belongs to you, that you did not receive? He says, so why then should you boast of it as if it belongs to you, as if it is your own in the first place? Because everything we have was given to us. And when you, so you are just a steward, you are a manager, and you have to live with the consciousness that why I, I have this thing because God gave it to me. The reason why I am blessed is because God gave it to me. So guess why some people are more blessed than others? Because God is looking for someone who will sponsor the gospel. And if you have the heart to give back to the gospel, then God will in return have a heart to give to you. God will give to you lavishly. That's why some people can only make ends meet and others. Now there is God is not responsible for the division of wealth on the earth realm. As in to say directly responsible for that. But there are natural things that you do and it fits you into the agenda for weight dis distribution. That's why everyone that is rich, they understand charity. They understand what it means to give back. Be it the believer or the unbeliever. As a matter of fact, many unbelievers thrive on their giving. They thrive and they are blessed by their giving. They understand the principle of giving. And that's a principle that works for them. So there are principles that if you understand this, you will pray differently. Before you pray, you realign your motives to align with the will of God. He says when you pray, pray for his kingdom to come and for his will to be done on the earth realm as it is in heaven. So when you are praying for God's blessing, it should be for his will to be done through you. The better way, rather than praying for God to grant you financial freedom so you can pay your bills and live a comfortable life, you should pray for God to make you a kingdom financier. When God makes you a kingdom financier, God is looking for people to finance his kingdom. He's looking for people to trust with wealth to finance his kingdom. Believe me, God will not put wealth for you to finance the kingdom and then you are broke. So, of course, you are going to have your own little that you are eating from there, which will be way better than what you could ever have by your own strength or what you could ever have for yourself because God will pour abundance in you so that you, don't, you are not just blessed. The best of your labor will bless you, will make you blessed. But when you turn to God and say, Father, I want to be a kingdom financier, God is going to say, okay, in that case, I can make you a blessing to the kingdom of God. I can bless you so much that it's not just for you and your family, but it extends beyond you. You'll be able to reach out to the poor and need to reach out to the kingdom projects, support ministries. That is how you pray. Instead of praying for God to give you your kingdom spouse, pray for God to give you a kingdom, a model kingdom marriage that will be an evidence to the world that God still blesses people with marriages that work, that marriage can still be blissful. So that when people come to you to ask how you do it, you are going to tell them it is God. I don't know who I came here for, but this is certainly a word for someone God says he's blessing you for himself. He's protecting you for himself. He's keeping you for himself. The reason why he has to give you that marriage, that breakthrough, it is for himself. Align yourself to this and you will see God do wonders in your life. You might just start by doing that right now. 
and saying, okay, I want to start aligning myself by being a partner to this ministry, or I am just blessed by this word, it ministered to me. And I want to sow a seed, just check the description box, you see the cash app, the PayPal, the mobile money, or you can just hit on that super thanks, and you are good to God. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.